It is a remarkable rebuilding story. And one of the things that I'm reflecting on as you talk about hurricane forecasting 20 years ago is how much science and technology have evolved since 2005. So this is a bit of a hypothetical question, but if a storm exactly like Katrina were to form today, follow the same path and reach the same scale, how would your warnings differ? What would you do differently? And what would we all know that perhaps we couldn't have known in 2005? Well, I think that uh, there likely would have been more advance notice about the uh, track to the west. Uh, for some time, there was concern that the storm after crossing Florida uh, might end up uh, tracking toward the Florida panhandle. And obviously, uh, from the track of the storm that you could see here back from 2005, uh, the storm ended up uh, moving quite a bit further west. And that's when we, ahead of other sources, made our adjustments to the wording and the descriptions of our concerns in the New Orleans area. The computer guidance that we utilize and the technology obviously has uh, innovated significantly in the last 20 years. And of course, here at AccuWeather, we're on the cutting edge of that. So I think that if the same kind of storm were to happen today, and by the way, it's likely that a similar storm like that will happen again in the future. So people need to be prepared for those kinds of impacts. But I think if a similar storm were to happen today, there would have likely been even more advance notice uh, for people in the New Orleans area, uh, such that the additional uh, evacuations could occur. And I think the uh, one of the other Im impacts that this shows is that the, the importance of local officials acting based upon the best forecasts and warnings. We know that one of the aspects that we saw after the storm was how tragic it was that there were school buses that ended up completely flooded in the New Orleans metro area because of their where they were parked. If those same school buses had been activated based upon the AccuWeather forecast, if local officials had activated those school buses in the days before the storm based on the AccuWeather forecast and the concern about flooding, how many more lives could have been saved across the New Orleans area? Instead, they sat in a completely flooded area. Those buses could have been so helpful for additional evacuation. So in the aftermath of this storm, obviously there were many reforms to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to state and local uh, governments in terms of how they uh, approach emergency management. Um, but there are many, many examples like that where the responses to storms by local and state officials and federal officials have greatly improved in the years since Katrina. It's also a powerful reminder once again of how often uh, water impacts are a significant part in uh, storms threats. If you look at the storm surge that occurred across uh, the uh, Louisiana and especially Mississippi coastlines, there was a storm surge of 25 to 30 feet in Bay St. Louis and other communities right along the Mississippi coast. And that caused tremendous destruction there as well. And there were significant water impacts from the storm as well, not only near the coast where there was 10 to 15 inches of rain in some areas, um, but uh, also very well inland as well, all the way up in the Ohio Valley where there was uh, flooding rains associated with the storm as well. So it once again highlighted all the impacts that can cause a risk to people's lives. And it's once again a reminder for us to all be prepared anywhere you live along the coast or inland areas that can be affected by tropical storms, hurricanes, or tropical rainstorms. We've got a lot of hurricane season left to go. We want, we want everybody not to let their guard down, but to be best prepared at following that AccuWeather forecast for threats on the way.